and gentlemen it's Will here back again with another battle report. Now I was hoping to be able to upload something uh, last week a battle I had with some orcs but uh, had problems with the footage so that didn't work but I'm back here now with my Space Marines against Sam's Tyranids. It's going to be a 1750 point Maelstrom of War mission and we've rolled up um, Contact Loss so it's the one where you can, no sorry Spores of War, so it's the one where you can steal each other's objectives um, I'll be using my salamanders. The list will be the one I used or showed in my uh, recent Space Marine list building video. And Sam's going to be using his Tyranids using the Leviathan supplement. And he's got a few new things he wants to try out tonight. So uh, let's start off with a look at my army. So if you've seen my uh, recent video about Space Marine list building, you'll have recognised this army. Got Vulcan Hastan leading a Battle Demi company. First tactical squad has a Flamer Combi Flamer in a Razorback. Second one has a Melter Combi Melter Multi Melter, and that's a full size squad in a Rhino. Another full size squad in a Rhino, this time with Flamer Combi Flamer and Heavy Bolter. Um, got the Devastator squad as well, that I've just realised I've not put out on the table, so I have to get them out in a second. And a pair of land speeders with multi melters and heavy flamers. And then a squad of two dreadnoughts with multi melters and extra armour. Then my auxiliary choice is three stone guard units as a first company strike force. And they've got the first squad is flamers, so two heavy flamers and a combi flamer. Then second squad is three combi melters, and third squad is two combi melters and a melter gun, and they are all in drop points. So that's 1750 points of Space Marines. Let's take a look at the Tyranids. Right, so here's my 1750 of Tyranids. Um, it's been a while since I've used them because I've just been working on getting them all painted and working on improvement. So starting with my Warlord, who is the Flyerant, uh, with two Twin Inter Barrows, obviously, that's all he's got. Then for troops, I've got two units of 15 Turgents with five Devourers and 10 Flesh Borers, and then two units of 20 Hormigants with Adrenal Glands. I then have 20 Gargoyles stock, a Horror Specs of Adrenal Glands, uh, three Zonthropes, uh, including a Neurothrope in the middle there. Um, they rolled up Paroxysm as their additional power, so they've also got Warblast, Variolation, Dominion. We've got two Venomthropes in a single unit there. Five Warriors with four Death Spitters and a Venom Cannon. And then two Exocrines, just to ground it off. And that's my 1750. So, yeah. Okay, so here's the battlefield. Um, as you can see, it's a mix of small ruins, a few large ruins, and small clusters of trees. Objectives fairly spread out. I've got one over here, one in the middle. There's a couple in the Tyranid deployment zone. One there behind the horror specs, and one in this building. And then a couple in the middle of the field. So uh, yeah, Space Marines won the roll off to go first and deploy first. Um, so I've deployed fairly spread out because um, I didn't know where my enemy was going to be but I'm um, hoping to use my manoeuvrability to focus on what I'll need to focus on. Um, this building here is actually at minus one cover save now after I deployed my devastators the hive tyrant was able to use his warlord trait to reduce the cover save of it so that's a bit of a pain because as you can see I've got a couple of horror specs there pointing at my devastators so uh, not horror specs sorry exocrines horror specs is that thing there um yeah melter tactical squad is in that rhino there flamer tactical squad in that one both of them will be combat squadding and almost stone guard in reserves along with vulcan who's coming down with a melter squad. Tyranid deployment. Um, the key thing to note here is he's got his Venom Thrups in the centre of the back there and most of his units have at least one model within two inches of them or six inches so they get plus two to their cover save. So all this horde of gaunts, both the Exocrines, the Flyerant, 
Uh, the only things that aren't benefiting are the horror specs and the zone throws. So uh, that's going to be uh, a tough little nut to crack there. There's a lot of bodies to get through before I can get his sign ups. Um, but anyway, uh, at the moment Space Marines have turn one. It's not night fighting and Sam's going to try and steal the initiative and get some revenge for our last game. Where That'd I be stole justice. Him. <laughs> no. No. Space Marines turn one. Here we go. So turn one, I've got Secure 4, Secure 1 and Big Game Hunter. Secure 4, nice and easy, just move the land speeders up to just in range of that and fired off a couple of shots at the Hormigaunts. Uh, did actually kill that one in the end, yeah, just killed one, so no real dent there. Um, Dreadnought's moved up towards 1, hoping to run onto it in the shooting phase. 2 inches away and rolled a 1 for their run move, so yay, go Dreadnoughts, they failed. Rhino's just moved up, tried to do some shots, didn't really do a lot as the Hormigaunts were in cover. But then the real work was over here. Two drop pods come down. First one unleashes flamer weapons all on the gargoyles. Killed, well, it looks about eight or nine dead gargoyles there in total. Uh, flamers and ignore cover bolts do, do some nice damage there, so that's uh, that squad reduced as a threat. And the Stone Guard came out, I called Devastator Doctrine, so I get reroll ones on shooting. And they, um, yeah, wiped out the horror specs. Basically, the, um, the flamers, sorry, the melters took three wounds off it. And then I went for the um, Hellfire rounds to wound on a 2+, plus, and uh, it failed enough saves that it's gone. So that's, uh, that's First Blood and Big Game Hunter, and a not very happy Sam that I killed his new toy. Fairly yeah. good. Sorry. Had it for ages, just not used it against you. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's out of the way anyway for First Blood. Um, other than that, the Devastators managed to kill his own throat. And the Razorback shot the zone throps as well, but they saved the uh, saved the wound there. So not a bad start. Got three points there. Would have really liked to get objective one because he's going to steal that off me next turn now because this is the mission where you can steal. But a good little turn for the space marines. And I actually remembered some of my special rules. Anyway, on to Tyranid turn one. So at the start of Tyranid turn one, Sam was holding score objective six. Objective 3 and Objective 4. So, uh, yeah, not the ideal positions, but uh, he certainly made a good go at doing it. Hive Tyrant flew over here and uh, then unleashed a bit of a psychic barrage, tried two paroxysms and the dreadnoughts, but um, failed, but did manage to put the horror on these guys who subsequently failed their pinning test. So, my devastators are now pinned, so not happy about that. Um, he also blew up the land speeders with his um, twin link devourers. So, uh, yeah, so a pretty good start for the hive tire up there. Most of the swarm just pushed forward, but the two exocrines stayed still and shot at the dreadnoughts, wrecked one of them. Um, the other one passed his cover saves, so uh, that's one dreadnought down. And over here, the zone clocks failed their psychic test to. Um, get off Soul Leech, Soul Leech, yes. Spirit Leech, and um, so that was alright, but then these guys killed two from the Goggles, killed two from Vulcan Squad, and elected not to charge them, something to do with the Heavy Flamers in that squad I think, and over here the Hormigaunts charged the other squad, killed four of them for loss of one in return, but First Company are fearless in this list, so uh, he held his ground. Points wise, he's just about towed into objective six, but other than that, um, Nids are lacking behind in the early stages, but he's taken out a couple of my key threats and left my Devastators uh, not exactly feeling uh, too good about life. So uh, yeah, this could still be close and there's a lot of bugs there to deal with. Um, as we go into Space Marine turn two, I'm going to roll for my reserves. Yes, so I get another drop pod and we go into turn two. And as we go into Space Marine Turn 3, I drew Secure Objective 6 and 1, as well as Witch Hunter, and Sam was holding on to Secure Objective 4 and 6. Uh, sorry, 4 and 3. 6 for squad last time. So 4 was going to be a no-go right over there, nothing on that side of the board since he killed my land speeders. But uh, Witch Hunter was an interesting prospect. 
So I brought my drop pod down, right in his back line, got a direct hit. Storm guard with melty guns got out and killed one of his own troops and put a wound on the other with their bolter rounds. But then it fell to lots of other units to try to finish them off. Um, the Razorback had a go, the Dreadnought thought it could have a go but it was out of range. All the drop pods fired at them. And eventually it was the snap firing heavy bolter dude out of this Razorback. Managed to get two sixes to hit and killed the Neurothrook. So uh, yeah, that was Witch Hunter and a big synaptic linchpin of the army down. Um, other than that, I moved up to uh, get this tank into position, um, moved this one forward, disembarked one of the combat squads who proceeded to flamer about half the hormones from that squad. Um, Devastators were pinned thanks to um, the horror from last turn, but they used that as an opportunity to shoot the flyer and managed to get one hit but failed to wound despite only needing two plus and the dreadnought stopped up to claim objective one so uh, oh and the um Vulcan and his stone guard finished off the gargoyles with their flamers so uh, yeah not a bad turn scored a lot of points got witch hunter six one and his copy of objective three so that's four more points but uh, there's still far too many bugs on this board for my liking, and I'm really not sure how I'm going to deal with that fly rank. But uh, let's see how it goes. Sam's just all his new cards, and we're heading into turn three. Sorry, I mean turn, Tyranid turn two, not turn three. So, we're now at the end of Tyranid turn two. Uh, Sam started his turn holding Supremacy, score objective two, which is over the back by that front pod, and score objective four, which is down here. Tried to run these Hormel guns down to there, but was an inch short on his run route, and then re-rolled exactly the same result with Fleet. So, uh, less than ideal there, he's not going to get that one this turn. Um, Hive Tyrant swooped crown to here, and uh, managed to get the horror off again on the Devastators, so they're once again pinned. Great work there, lads. Um, we then fired at the Dreadnought with his um, Twin Link Devourers and put one hull point on it. Um, over here, both these groups of Hormagaunts, sw uh, Termagants, swarmed in around this tactical squad, killed four of them with shooting, and then one group assaulted the last survivor who somehow still survived. Really don't know how he did that, but nice work there. Um, both of the um, Exocrines, the Exocrines, they both shot this drop pod here, trying to blast it off that objective, put two whole points on it and left it snap firing next to it, but didn't manage to wipe it out. However, the Hormagaunts did get into combat with the Stone Guard that were there and finished them off for no casualties. So it's very interesting how he spread out his Hormagaunts here. He's got a few acting as a wall for Vulcan on his flamers while the bulk of the squad's over there. Um, so he's cleared all my troops off there, but I've still got the drop pod preventing him from scoring that objective. I missed out on objective four and was nowhere near supremacy. So uh, although the nids are really swarming my lines, I am still up on points. But let's see if we can keep that going and eat into their numbers as we head into Space Marine turn three. Start of Space Marine turn three, I'm holding secure objective two and four as well as blood and guts. And Sam is also holding two and four, so they're going to become important objectives. Um, so to get objective two, uh, I had to get the Hormagaunts away from it, uh, which I was able to do with Vulcan in the squad. They put enough wounds on there to force a leadership test, uh, and the Warriors and the Hive Tyrant were just out of range for sign-ups, so um, yeah, they had to take leadership test on minus two, thanks to the first company task force bonus. So they were testing on that leadership four and unsurprisingly ran off the table to score two points there. To get to four I was hoping the Dreadnought could get into combat with these guys, run them down and try and get somewhere close to it. We got into combat but only killed two and uh, they were in synapse so the leadership test but where I killed the ones right on the edge, they were too far away to get back into combat, so we're actually disengaged now, as I understand it. So those two units are no longer fighting, which means the Hormogorks are going to be free to grab Objective 4 for two points next turn. Um, in the middle, I disembarked uh, this half tactical squad and both halves of this tactical squad and fired at those tournaments in the middle and the combined power of all three squads, plus the two rhinos and the drop pod, finally finished off that group of termagants. These guys, however, were locked in combat, so I couldn't shoot them, but they did finally kill off the tactical marine in the assault phase. Um, 
Blaz Cameron, the Razorback, tried to shoot the Venom Throx, rolled a one, and then re rolled to a one because that's how much Wind Link weapons work when they're Blaz Cannons. And the Devastators actually managed to get to a hit on the Venom Throx, but they passed their cover save. So, points wise, I ended up with Secure Objective 2 twice, but um, unfortunately not getting Objective 4, so Sam's probably going to score that next turn. And I'm going to discard Blood and Guts. So, uh, Space Wings are starting to eke out an advantage now, but it's certainly not all over yet. Let's see what happens as we go into Tyranid turn 3. So, with numbers on the battlefield depleting, the Tyranid turn was somewhat shorter. Um, he did have Harness the Walk as his objective, which he was able to score with his Hive Tyrant, who once again managed to leave my Devastators pinned with the horror. That's worked really nicely this game. And he uh, blew up my Dreadnought. Oh no, he paroxysm my Dreadnought with the Hive Tyrant before subsequently wrecking it with shots in the rear from the Warriors. His other objectives were five, which is over there in the middle of nowhere, and four, which he scored two points for Forget the Hormigants over there. The main impact was these um, Termigants, the Hive Tyrant, and both of the Exocrines firing at these various tactical squads, leaving all of them somewhat depleted. These guys fell back. He's, that squad's down to one dude, they're down to three. A um, little bit of bad luck in the shooting, to be honest. He could have done a lot more, but it's uh, taken a big chunk out of the centre of my army and scored himself three points. So uh, a little bit of a comeback turn for the Nids, but uh, as we head into Space Marine turn four, things are still pretty tight. Okay, so Space Marine turn four, my objectives. Hungry for glory, that's going to be fun, trying to get any challenge with the Hive Tyrant who's still flying. Behind enemy lines, automatically done by my drop pod. And secure five, I had nothing in the vicinity for that, so it was more about inflicting casualties, minimising my own losses, and claiming that objective at the end of the turn. So, um, these guys sort of clustered around here, killed a few tournaments, but they were fearless. Both rhinos take shots, this one to push the Venom Thrips further back away from the Termigants, this one to push the Termigants off the objective. The uh, pinned Devastators had another crack at the Hive Tyrant, and this time actually managed to put a wound on him. So uh, one down, four to go. Um, the Razorback, which has still got his squad inside there, moved up. Um, wasn't really in range to do a lot, um, so I just went as fast as I could to get closer to his lines and snap fired the last cannon at the Venom Throps, which did nothing. This tactical squad did actually put a wound on the Venom Throps, and Vulcan and the survivors of the Stone Guard tried to move through cover, got two inches, and tried to run, got one inch, so they're not getting anywhere very quick. Um, so I scored one point for behind enemy lines, and after I'd sort of claimed that, Sam then pointed out that actually if I had moved this squad into his deployment zone rather than up into the ruins, I could have actually had three points because these guys were within 12. I didn't think they were close enough, but it turns out they are, so uh, oops on my part there. Had one when I could have had three, but hey, it's still another point, and I'm going to discard Hungry for Glory as we head into the fourth Tyranid turn. Turn four, and the Tyranids had as their objectives Ascendancy, Kingslayer and secure objective 5. I also had a copy of 5 and he was able to secure that nice and easily with these movements. They felt their instinctive behaviour and should have charged the nearest unit, but there was nothing anywhere within their charge range. They were able to move freely and ran to claim that objective to score Tyranids 2 points. Now we had hoped to score supremacy by, uh, sorry, ascendancy by claiming a few of my objectives. Um, he was going to blow this Rhino up, but the uh, Death Spitters didn't manage to damage it at range and then only put one hull point on in combat. This Rhino, however, did get wrecked by the Venom Throps, and the Exocrine, uh, so the back Exocrine blew up the drop pod that was sitting on Objective 2 before the front Exocrine shot at Vulcan's squad and killed two of the guys but left Vulcan alive. He's actually discarded Kingslayer now because Vulcan isn't going to be there out in the open so much next turn. Um, Hive Tyrant had a, an interesting psychic phase. He managed to get psychic, no, um, 
the horror off on the Devastators, but they pass their leadership test this time. But he then casts Paroxysm to drop their weapon skill and ballistic skill by one for a turn, so they're still not firing at full effectiveness. Um, in combat, the Termagants managed to get in with this uh, depleted tactical squad, but um, had a really bad showing of dice rolls and lost one of their number for no damage in return. So uh, a bit of an unlucky turn for the Tyranids there. Could have done better if the dice had uh, been average, but he scored a couple of points and we're heading into the fifth turn. Good selection of cards to start turn five here. No prisoners, supremacy, and secure objective three. And supremacy is actually going to be pretty easy despite how close things are, thanks to my objective secured. So, how did we go about this then? Well, I wanted to grab objective six nice and easy. So, this one isolated tactical marine ran off and grabbed that. Well, these guys moved in to try and support the Termagants who've been in combat, oh sorry, support the tactical squad in combat with the Termagants, but they actually failed the charge. Combat resulted in one, two dead Termagants and one dead Marine, but they were holding fast thanks to Synapse. Over here, these guys on the roof moved along to secure objective two, which was uh, essential for scoring supremacy, and um, yeah, then shot the Exocrine with their melted guns for two wounds before the Devastators put another three wounds on it um, and killed it. So yeah, that's the Exocrine out of the way. Wait, the first one. There's a second one there. Uh, I forgot to move this Rhino. I really should have moved it. And um, as a result, the Tyranid Warriors had an extra round of combat. But continuing with Sam's bad luck from this turn, he's... Uh, yeah, not managed to wreck it. So, uh, yeah, my mistake, but a uh, lucky escape this time. So that scores me three points of supremacy because objective one's under there and he's only holding five. Also got no prisoners and as much as I'd like to discard secure objective three, I can't. But uh, not a bad turn at all there for the Marines, really. And uh, we go into what could be the last Tyranid turn. So both sides are now heavily depleted as we go into turn five. Tyranids had Big Game Hunter, Supremacy, and Secure Objective 6, which is down here. So, uh, yeah, um, the Tyranid Warriors managed to finally wreck the Rhino in combat after a couple of turns of trying, so that got a Big Game Hunter. And the Hive Tyrant had a really good turn, flew over there, uh, failed to either horror or paroxysm the Devastator, but then just shot them. And uh, the two survivors ran away down to the bottom here, so they're uh, not a threat to the Hive Tyrant now. Um, Termagants got a little bit locked down in combat, unfortunately, but the Exocrine managed to wipe out the whole tactical squad in a single shot. So, uh, yeah, that scored him um, Big Game Hunter, but unfortunately wasn't able to pull out either Ascendancy or getting down to objective number six, which had this Marine on it. So, uh, yeah, let's see if the game carries on, because that's end of five. It's a five, one more turn. So turn six is going to be all about scoring for me. Um, ascendancy needed to get any three objective markers. Psychological warfare was going to be tough and secure objective three was actually going to be achievable this turn because my guy was uh, at a marine close enough to do it. The guy sitting on objective six moved six down here and then got six for his one to just go for his run. So he's just close enough to objective three to secure that. Moved Vulcan to objective six to secure that. And these guys are still sitting on objective two here. So that's my ascendancy. And there really wasn't a lot more to do. They had a shot the Venom Crooks, finally killed one of them. Um, and there's a combat that we will just need to finish off in a second. Um, but the Devastators rally had to move to get line of sight. So what did the snap fire? Because uh, shoot the fire because they were snap firing anyway. And actually managed to put another wound on it with a lucky hit. He then then failed his grounding test and took another wound. So Flyrant's down to one wound and I've uh, just got this uh, little combat to resolve but before I do that I'll just roll through my symbols to score on camera. That's two points so that's uh, going to give me a comfortable advantage there and I'm going to discard psychological warfare. Turn six cards were not kind to the Tyranids with domination, 
Secure Objective 3 and Hungry for Glory. Bear in mind, Objective 3 is right the way down here. So um, he was able to wipe out the Devastators with the Hive Tyrant, and the Termagants finished their combat with um, the Tactical Marines, finally wiped them out. But uh, yeah, and the Exocrine killed off the one stone guard that was hanging out with Vulcan and put the wound on Vulcan. Um, surely a two and four one, he's got two left. Uh, but unfortunately for the Tyranids, the Termagants weren't, uh, the Tyranid warriors weren't able to uh, get past his armour. And uh, yeah, the cards were just really not good. I feel for you, mate. That was, uh, that was unlucky. But, uh, let's see if the game ends. Here we go. Note seven, turn seven coming up. So after Sam's bad objectives last turn, I get bad objectives this time around. Domination, physically haven't got enough units to do it. Secure objective one, nothing I can get to it. And scour the skies. Well, he's got a Hive Tyrant on one wound. Except I have nothing left alive that's got ranged in. The nearest model is that drop pod. And that's, can't even see him. So uh, yeah, wasn't going to score any of those. So it was just about preserving my Warlord for the final turn. So I moved Vulcan over here, tried to have some shots at the Venom Throps with the Tactical Marines, but was unable to finish them off. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much that as we head into the final Tyranid turn. And that is it, end of Tyranid turn 7. Um, we managed to secure objective 1 that turn for a point and objective 4 for 2 points. But more significantly, the Hive Tyrant was finally able to kill off Vulcan. Uh, just too many wounds, couldn't pass on the saves, and Vulcan's dead. And these Tyranid warriors got into combat with the tactical squad in that building, wiped them out. Um, so yeah, end of the turn. End of the game, all I have is those two drop pods and this one tactical marine hiding down here. However, when we added up the points, 17 points to the space marines and only 12 to the Tyranids. So, uh, yeah, victory for the Imperium's finest. Um, Tyranids put up a really solid fight there, although the dice and the cards went against them and they still really put the hurt on me. I've got a lot still on here versus my one tactical marine and two pods. It's a good game, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll uh, see you in a minute for the post game. Okay, so a victory there for the Salamanders, but a victory that came at quite a high cost. By the end of the game, I had a single tactical marine left on the board and two immobile drop pods, and that was it. That was all I had left. Uh, another turn and I'd have got wiped out but uh, hey it's not about how many models you've got left alive it's about the points and uh, yeah the uh, maneuverability and the the drop pods in that army uh, together with some good luck I think I, I had the better of the cards there um, meant that we we claimed the victory um, although I think the overall points really do uh, do flatter my army there say another turn and I'd have been wiped off the board so uh, well done to Sam I know he was a little bit uh, down about the performance of his Tyranids, but actually watching the video back, there's a lot of real positives in that army. Um, the Hive Tyrant was just amazing. He must have killed double his points worth of stuff and basically kept my Devastators from contributing from turn two onwards. Um, and the Mass Swarm of Infantry certainly uh, did a lot. That was uh, a big component of his army. And the Venom Thrups, they're really cheap for what they do, but the way he was able to bubble wrap them with the rest of his army meant that actually there was really hard to crack anything that was near and around the Venom Thrups. I was really stuck to taking pot shots at anything inside the bubble with them and then really taking the fight to the units outside of it. Um, like I say, the uh, only two units that went down easy early on, the Horospex and the Gargoyles, were both because they were really outside of the bubble um, and uh, yeah would have been interesting to see how the horror specs had got on if I left it alive but drawing um, uh, what was it uh, oh, what, what was the card I drew there the one we have to kill something big 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 game hunter that's it drawing that on the first turn and having the drop pod it was it was too easy a target and it needed to go but uh, you know it's uh, um, yeah, certainly be interesting to see how that would actually get on if it had lived long enough to get in the fight. Um, I thought the big underachiever there was the, um, uh, what they called, um, Zonethrops. The two turns that they were alive for, they just really, uh, 
didn't pull their weight, which is a shame because they're a core model and I think logically they should do well. They just didn't seem to have the uh, the luck in the psychic phase. But I mean, well played to Sam. He uh, took the advantages when he could and uh, gave me a good tough fight. And like I said, another turn, I'd have been wiped off the board. Um, as for my army, I think I um, possibly need to still do some work on the list. It's better than it was. It's actually won a game, which is nice. But uh, still not 100% there. I'm, but I'm a bit hesitant to make any changes this side of, uh, of next weekend when uh, the new Angels of Death supplement comes out. Because from the rumours I've seen, it's pretty much confirmed that the Salamanders are getting something. Now, whether that's a full detachment or maybe just formations they can use in an existing detachment, I'm not sure. But uh, certainly worth a, worth a look. And I've, uh, I've got that on pre-order. And so... Look out for me and Sam doing a review of that very soon after it comes out. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this battle and join me again soon for another one.